Many Christians practice their faith in various different ways, oftentimes in fellowship with other believers. As coming together to worship God is a biblical thing to do, in relation to Hebrews 10 verse 25, some get confused about what a church even is. Is it the gathering of believers, or is it the building? Now, many believers will be able to give you a quick response and tell you that it is the people. And yet, they'll be quick to ask you, which church do you attend? I.e., a designated location with an address, referring to a building. If you enter into one of these places, you'll hear quotes from the pulpit like, Welcome to this house of God or glad to see you all in church this morning, and so on and so forth. Essentially, these buildings are temples of worship, and when turning to the New Testament, there is no express command to even have a building designated for a congregation. Let's turn to the scriptures and see what the Bible has to say. Acts 7 verses 48 to 50 Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? This is not the only passage in the Bible that makes this statement, as here Stephen is quoting Isaiah 66 verses 1-2, to and Paul, when he was preaching on Mars Hill, quotes the exact same thing in Acts 17 verse 24. A person is not closer to God in a stingy old building as opposed to places like out in nature where he made everything good in the beginning. Let's turn to the next verse. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? If you hear someone calling a building a house of God, question where they are getting this from. God's Spirit is in his believers, so to call a building this is jumping right back into Old Testament customs that are totally alien to the New Testament we are under today. Which Galatians 2 verse 18 says, For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Let us take into consideration another factor when it comes to these buildings with what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14 Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Tell me something. If you are going to a location with hundreds if not thousands of people assembling, how do you know that everyone there is a believer? As a matter of fact, many places even encourage non-believers to be a part of their fellowship. And yet the context of being unequally yoked with unbelievers is specifically in fellowship. This is because those who run the buildings rely on filling the pews with as many people as possible, hoping for future donations, compromising a small personal and local fellowship with good doctrine for a production, oftentimes using new versions the preachers do not even believe is the infallible word of God, which turns them into the final authority as they bounce between multiple versions and or Greek texts to suit their own means. Let's transition to the next point. Matthew 18 verses 19 to 20 Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Another point that puts this whole church building system into question is, why the need for so many people altogether? 
Does God make void the fellowship of two people reading the Bible together because they didn't do so in the right setting? Of course not. God will bless a small group of believers having real fellowship far more than large crowds where most of those there will never pick up a Bible the rest of the week and use their attendance in these places as a cloak for their sin. Finally, let's close on one last passage that should bring the point home for many. Matthew 22 verses 18 to 21 But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Shew me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is the image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. Essentially, Jesus is demonstrating that there is a separation of church and state. Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When the most recent pandemic took place, Almost all of these buildings caved in to government pressure and completely shut their doors during a time of increased drug use and suicides. When people needed churches the most, the churches were not there. Because Caesar said so. These buildings have created a facade that gives the illusion that the church is strong because it has big buildings and multiple people attending them. But by their fruits ye shall know them. God dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Start taking your walk with Christ outside of these buildings and reconsider how you fellowship. <laughs>